In our last episode, we explored Pennsylvania Avenue, but I missed a few things. A mistake I rarely make, a mistake I'm rectifying now. Before we head to Metro Central, there are a few things left to explore here in Pennsylvania Avenue. Now, in my last episode, during the montage, I showed off a unique box that I found on the scaffolding on the side of one of the large buildings on Pennsylvania Avenue. At the time, I didn't think much of it because I didn't think you could actually reach it, but I was wrong. Turning around from Metro Central, if we head down Pennsylvania Avenue towards the scaffolding, eventually we find a lamp post that has fallen over. It's leaning against the wall of this building and it provides a handy ramp that we can use to climb up to the scaffolding. And at the top, we find the body of a mercenary. This is no common mercenary. This is a member of Talon Company. On his inventory, we find energy cells, a laser pistol, leather armor, annoyingly not Talon combat armor. But uniquely, we find the Pennsylvania Avenue explosives note. Reading it in our inventory, the explosives have been placed along Pennsylvania Avenue as instructed. The electrical switch is located on the first level of the scaffolding on Pennsylvania Avenue. Simply flip the switch, take cover, and get ready for one hell of a show. I'm going to stick around a little longer to see if I can pick off a couple more mutants. Mercenary Thompson, Talon Company. Climbing over Thompson's body, sure enough, we can walk along this level of the scaffolding. But we don't get far before. Whoa! What? But we cleared Pennsylvania Avenue. Racing forward, we can flip the switch. The explosions rocket down Pennsylvania Avenue, exploding any cars that get in the way. But these two mutants that came out of this alleyway apparently weren't within the area of effect of the detonations, for it didn't even touch them. So we've got to take them out from range. There's our Wastelander, whose life we saved in the back of the truck in our last episode. Good to see he's still around and kicking. Switching the electrical switch again does nothing. All of the mines have detonated. Interestingly, I don't think these mines were real mines. Remember, we explored this entire street and we didn't pick up any mines along the way. And you know me, if there are mines in the street, I find them, whether I want to or not. <laughs> and we didn't find any. So I think this is a scripted encounter. Not only had we cleared the street of all enemies and we didn't find any mines, but as soon as we read the note, two super mutants spawned. And when we flipped the switch, these invisible non-existent mines began to detonate. So it's a one-time cool little show that we get to experience here in Pennsylvania Avenue. But that's not all I missed when I was here last. Turning back around and following Pennsylvania Avenue towards Metro Central, we can turn north to skirt past Metro Central and then turn west to head towards that gated off area where we found the baby carriage with the doll head trap inside. But before we get there, we find a manhole cover to a sewer in the middle of the sidewalk. And we can head down there. At the bottom, we arrive in some train tunnels not a sewer. We see train tracks on either side of us with train cars on the tracks. We hear walking around to the west. Moving that way to try and see who's there, we eventually pick up the sound of a super mutant walking on the other side of this train car. Hopping between the cars to find him. We can shotgun him to death. 
The pathways on other side of the train cars are rather narrow. We can move all the way to the northern end from here to circle around the train cars to arrive back where we started. In this little nook, we find some cart cages. We've seen these before. The super mutants use these cart cages to imprison wastelanders that they capture for transportation. Looks like they're using this train system as a base from which to make these cart cages. By a couch, we find an ammunition box, and then lying on the ground next to the couch, we find a makeshift bedding, and we can actually use this to sleep. It's just a piece of cardboard laid out on the concrete, and there's another one here by the other track. We could sleep on either of these. Well, let's explore this other track first. The track where we killed the mutant is likely the one we need to follow, so let's see what's over here. Moving around to the other side of the train, however, we find holes in the walls, holes in the floor, but our path north blocked in with concrete rubble and ruined train car, so this track is a dead end. Back the way we came, and west to the other track, we can follow this pathway south. We walk for a long while, sandwiched between the train car and this wall as it rounds a bend. Eventually, the wall opens up, revealing a track on the other side. And here we find a mutant patrolling. We can back up and wait for him to get a bit closer before we shotgun him to death. Oh, well, I was hoping for a fight. I'm really unsatisfied with how Vats has been working with my shotgun. I think if I get too close to these mutants and then try to use Vats, the game glitches out or something because the barrel of my shotgun doesn't actually face the enemy and my shots don't land. Anyway, on the second track we see a couple of ways forward and they appear to be clear. I wanted to make sure there was nothing on the other side of this train car on the first track that we found. So, I explored up and down it until I found an opening between the cars. Then, I went all the way to the west on the northern side, but found nothing. Then, all the way to the south on the northern side, but again found nothing. So, there's nothing else on this track. Retracing our steps back to the break in the wall, we can move over to the other track. We see lights to the west, but a lot of rubble to the east. Let's start by going east. Moving east, we find a big pile of trash. But upon closer inspection, we see a hole in this wall, a bunch of cinder blocks, and ammo canisters. One, two, three, four, five ammo canisters, to be precise. We walk away with frag mines, frag grenades, and a bunch of ammunition. What a handy find. And then this is easy to miss, especially with my ENB, but lying on the ground next to these ammo canisters is a magazine. It's a copy of Tumblers Today, which improves our lock picking, and we can snag this as well. Then, turning east, we see that this pathway is blocked in with more concrete. So since we can't go that way, we can turn around and follow the tracks to the west. The tracks continue to the west, but we see a doorway to the south. We'll take a pit stop, go west in a bit, but first open the door to the south. We arrive at the bottom of a staircase leading up. Oh god, how deep will this go? We don't see anything at the bottom of this staircase except for a bunch of pipes, so climbing the stairs we get to the top. Oh wait, lying on the ground on the western side of this platform are a bunch of skeletons. One, two, three skeletons. The middle skeleton has some microfusion cells scattered around his body. His left arm was clutching a laser pistol. We find a battery-powered lamp near to these bodies, and near to the skeleton's right hand is a holotape. Hidden stash note. JP is a lying, toilet-sucking, good-for-nothing, rad-brained bastard. The stash doesn't exist. We searched everywhere down here and nothing. Not one lousy gun. We managed to pick up some ammo, but that's about it. Now we are stuck here with these damn mutants streaming in and out of the tunnels. 
What are those bastards even doing? I snuck some of our supplies at the end of the southeast tunnel under some debris. There's no way we can sneak past the bastards, carrying it all by ourselves. Hell, I'll send JP down here next time to retrieve it. See how he likes it. Oh, so all of the ammo canisters and the copy of Tumblr's Today were placed by these guys who came down here looking for a hidden stash planted by a one JP. Well, we haven't found anything else coming up this way. I guess we'll keep our eyes peeled, see if maybe JP wasn't lying after all. Back down the staircase into the tracks, we can continue west. We find a path to the north to the other side of these tracks, and there walking around is a mutant. But a sneak critical from the sniper rifle helps out. While looking for JP's stash, we can move around to the western side of this ruined car on these tracks, but we just find big piles of concrete. Lots of rubble, no loot. Moving through the gap to the other tracks, looks like we can continue to follow it west, but turning east, we see this path blocked in as well. No secret stash here, not even when we look on top of the rail car. So we can continue to follow the tracks to the west, loot the super mutant along the way, and keep our eyes peeled. Eventually, we find a skeleton hanging by his hands from an iron girder. It's an odd place to find a skeleton. Almost looks like a crucifixion. But no loot here, so continuing north, we find a door to the west and a dead end to the north. More big slabs of concrete, no loot at the end of the tunnel. So to continue, we move west, open a door to find ourselves at the bottom of another ladder. Climbing the ladder, we arrive in Seward Square. And immediately, we see a super mutant hiding by some ductwork to the southwest. This sewer puts us out into an alleyway between buildings in Seward Square. If we continue down the alley, we round a corner to find another mutant in the street. <laughs> there you are! Well, this video is not about Seward Square, so we need to turn around and retrace our steps. We have now found two pathways from Pennsylvania Avenue to Seward Square. We'll have to tackle it soon, but this is a dead end for our sewer, and it looks like JP really was lying. There's no other hidden stash here in the sewers, so we can retrace our steps through these train tunnels until we arrive back at Pennsylvania Avenue. Then we can move towards Metro Central, but along the way, I noticed something that I didn't notice in my last video. Off in the distance to the east, we see a large building with a sign, The Clarabella, placed on top of it. Presumably this was a hotel, or maybe a fancy restaurant. But getting up close to the Clarabella, we don't find any doors we can use to access it. No way into this building. It's just a unique piece of set design here in Pennsylvania Avenue. So we can head down the escalators to at last move towards Metro Central. But before we go, we can have a very brief montage this time of some of the unique sites we just discovered.
And with that, I think I can confidently say for the last time that we have seen everything in Pennsylvania Avenue. I just wanted to make sure to get this short video out early this week to cover everything we missed before I publish my upcoming video on Metro Central. That's where we are headed next. So if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, and YouTube members get little badges that appear next to their names in the comment sections of my videos and access to ox emojis that they can use in the video comments and in the live chats of my live streams. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.